During the next 25 minutes, over 200 serious crimes will be committed in the United States. Many of these crimes will take place in the so-called security of the home. Throughout the country, crime is increasing six times faster than the population. As we face this national crisis, there is an ever-increasing demand for more police protection and rightfully so. As executive director of the International Association of Chiefs of Police, Quinn Tam is aware of all phases of crime and law enforcement. Being a representative of the country's local police chiefs, he is their spokesman at the national level. The national average of less than two persons in the police force for every 1,000 citizens seems at first to be a satisfactory ratio. But policemen, being human, do become sick they must have vacations, appear as witnesses in court, perform countless other jobs that take them off the front line of duty. In addition, the force must be deployed through three or more shifts. And finally, there are communicators and clerks who, while vital, are not where the action is. So when you get right down to it, there is really only one police officer to protect 6,000 people. And still our population grows with the crime rate growing even faster, stretching your police protection still further. Yet nearly every official agrees that the final answer to this problem of personal protection is not merely an increase in the size of the police force. It is estimated that within the year, 16 out of every 1,000 citizens will become the victims of some major crime. You, as an individual, must be responsible for taking the proper precautions to protect yourself and your property.
The answer lies with you. One area where the public is particularly apathetic toward its responsibility is automobile thefts. Drivers too often tempt thieves by leaving the keys in the ignition or their cars unlocked. Let's take a look. Okay. She went into that beauty parlor. Yeah, could have gone there. She left the keys. Yeah, let's go. That looks like a house key. Yeah, look at this. Let's check out her house. Good idea, let's go. The owner is at least morally responsible for any accident involving his stolen car. In view of this, it is surprising that more local governments haven't enacted ordinances, making it a misdemeanor to leave an unattended car unlocked. As the country becomes more urbanized, as more and more people are jammed into big cities, the dangers for a woman are increasing. These dangers, which have always been present, are not only on the streets, but now have invaded her home. A woman's best self-defense is learning how to avoid trouble and what to do if trouble becomes inevitable. When a building entrance is hidden or screened from street traffic, it should be protected by a gate or grill at street level. But unless the gate or grill is provided with a lock, and unless the lock is used, it will serve no purpose. The entrance should be well lighted, especially in areas where prowlers might hide. When arriving home, keys should be ready, and the building entered immediately. If you find yourself with a stranger in an elevator, stand near the signal board. In case of a hostile move, hit the alarm button and as many floor buttons as you can manage. If it becomes necessary, use your lungs and scream. Whenever you change residence, a reliable locksmith should be hired to rekey all locks. This doesn't necessarily mean buying new locks, but simply resetting the cylinder to a new key. In any case, a secure apartment entrance lock should be on the front door. A deadlock with a one-inch throw bolt and hardened steel insert is suitable for this purpose. It cannot be jimmied or cut with a hacksaw. The vital key cylinder area is recessed and protected by armor plate to prevent the twisting or pulling out of the cylinder. When locked, the outside knob is free turning. Hammers or wrenches have no effect. An interviewer should be installed on the front door. From inside, in complete safety, you can question the caller through the viewer. One way to invite trouble is for a young woman to advertise her single status. This should read simply, J. Collier. <laughs> Hello? Who's there? Who's there? Oh. The back door of this particular apartment originally had a night latch with a spring bolt. This type of latch yields easily to a shim, which is any piece of thin, pliable material that can bend around corners and open the latch. So a double cylinder lock was installed. Now, even if the glass in the door were broken, the door could not be opened without a key. Just a minute. Who is it? Uh, it's the cleaners, ma'am. Oh? Then you have my blue silk dress. 
That's right. All right. Just a minute and I'll get some money. Hello, operator. Would you please connect me with the police? Yes, I want to report a prowler or somebody trying to break into my apartment. Thank you. Hello, police? This is Jean Collier. Even though a caller is expected or a delivery man is well known, never answer the door unless you are fully clothed. Concern for personal security is not limited to major cities alone. Families moving to the suburbs bring about a more casual way of living. From this has developed a general lack of concern for personal security. As a result, the fastest increasing rate of crime in the United States today is in the suburban areas. However, there are some things the individual can do to provide his home with a measure of security. If you must leave your home for any period of time, arrange to have your lawn cut. Cancel all daily deliveries and arrange with a neighbor or the post office to hold or forward your mail. Close and lock all windows and doors, leaving shades or drapes in a normal position, never completely closed. Set both the radio and the lights on a timer which will go on and off at customary hours. Whether you're away or not, your garage is particularly inviting. Due to large investments in power tools, sports equipment, and other valuables, garage doors should be kept locked at all times. Any garage windows should be protected with expanded metal. Double hung windows can be secured against intruders by installing a small auxiliary lock, which cannot be opened without a key. Even a small round-headed screw can act as a deterrent. Nobody wants to barricade their sliding glass doors or block their view windows. There are some basic safety devices you can use. A good lock for sliding doors can be recognized because the bolt will interlock with the jam, not just hook into a slot or eyelet. One of the least expensive and easiest ways of providing additional security for this kind of door is by placing a steel rod in the track or by drilling a small hole into the sill and dropping a steel pin into the hole. And there is also a commercial device called a Charlie bar, which serves the same purpose. But it must be used to be effective. Wherever there is glass, particularly small panes of glass immediately adjacent to the latch area, use a double cylinder lock. Once inside, the burglar has the run of your home. No one is going to hurry him. He can take his time and make his selection with leisure. A sturdily built cabinet or a closet with a heavy door and a good lock will frustrate and hamper his effort if it is used.
the rambling ranch-style home has gained enormously in popularity, bringing with it a constant striving for better views from any room in the house. With the population explosion and a widespread flight to the suburbs, there has come a desire for a more casual way of living. Coupled with this more casual life is a general lack of concern for personal security. If you can't recall with certainty where every key is that opens the locks to your home, it is time to change or rekey the locks. If you must have a spare key somewhere, use some imagination about where you hide it. Certainly not in full view of the street. The minimum standard for a good lock should be the deadlocking latch bolt. When the door is closed, a little plunger is automatically depressed, locking the latch bolt against end pressures or jimmying.
With the nation's crime rate rising daily, it has become the responsibility of each person to use every precaution possible in making their home secure. The security of the home through the installation of safety devices should never be less than 100%. If there is a single breach, you haven't done the job. Carol?